Hi, I'm Vic Fernandes, and in this series, Vic Fernandes Unplugged, I share with you some very personal and intimate stories about life. People see where you are in life at a particular stage, and, and they assume that you've always had it, whatever it is that it is that you have. But life is a journey, and that journey sometimes involves twists and turns. Now, I've been told many times that I have a story to tell. I'm not sure if my story is any better or worth hearing than anybody else's, but I resisted for a long time doing it because sometimes when you tell a story, if you're going to be true to yourself and to the story, then the truth has to hang out. And sometimes what you say may in fact hurt someone or cause someone some pain. And that's never been my thing, never wanting deliberately or intentionally to cause anyone pain. Today I want to reflect on what was a painful experience. And in fact, I draw two parallels, one of seeing the first person or the body of a person at a very young age, and then the departure of my dad leaving. Now, the interesting thing is that I can't remember anything before the age of three. And yet at the age of three, there are two things. One, death, and the other, sort of like a death in a way. So we lived in 10th Avenue, Belleville, and I was about two and a half to three years old. And I remembered walking down the avenue one day and there was this lady standing in a house and there was a piece of equipment and what turned out to be a coffin and she was crying. And I asked her why she was crying. And she said to me, my husband has died. And inquisitive me, walked up to the lady's house and I went up on my toes and peeked in and I saw this dead man and I don't think I must have slept for about a week after that because it was the first time I had seen a motionless body and in a box it was quite traumatic I've never forgotten that I've forgotten what the lady looked like but I remembered the tears and the sadness Sometime after that, when my dad and my mom went their separate ways, and I will talk in glowing terms in the future at some point about my mom, but today the story is really about being three years old. And the only thing I can remember from age three was my dad leaving. And why is that? It must have been a traumatic experience that shaped my future life. I was very close to my dad. I loved him dearly and I still love him even though he's now long past. But I remembered like yesterday, I could describe, if I were a painter, I could paint the building that was the old Seaville Airport. It was a wooden building, as I recall it. And I remember standing in that wooden building with my mom, and I was crying because my dad was leaving. Where was he leaving? I'm going to. All I knew he was going away, he was going to Canada. He was going purportedly to make a better life for him. And he was sad because he didn't want necessarily to leave, but felt that he had to. And I remembered my mom saying, when I was standing there and crying, she said, okay, go, go, go to the fence, go. And I remember running to the fence and standing and looking through the fence. And my dad went up the steps of that plane and he turned at the top of the stairs by the entrance and he waved. I've never forgotten that. Now I can't remember anything else, age four, age five, six, or anything specific, but that one thing stood with me all these years. And I tell the story because in a sense, we have to be careful and understand how our actions affect those around us, 
how things that happen shape who you are. The next time I would see my dad was when I passed to get into Combermere School at age 11. And he came and he had asked me in advance what I wanted and I said a bicycle. And so I got a new bicycle for passing to go to Combermere School. And my dad went with me that first morning up to Combermere School and he came back for me in the afternoon after school. And that is a cherished memory too as well. But between the age of three and the age of 11, outside of the letters and an occasional phone call because you needed a mortgage to be able to make a phone call, there was no connection, no physical connection with my dad. And I miss that and miss that terribly. And so it shaped in many respects my own relationships and my own broken marriages and my own love for my children and my desire to be part of their lives on an ongoing basis. Because I remember the times when I would lie in my bed at home and cry because my dad was not present and because I needed his presence. My mother more than made up for it 